Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our Lord. We come before your holy presence and we thank you for what you are going to do today. Thank you for what you have done in the course of the day. Father, we have gathered in your name and we focus our eyes onto you, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We have come to hear your word and to be fed by your word and to eat of you, for you are the bread of life. Feed us with your word again, O Lord, for man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh up from your mouth, O Lord. Therefore, feed our souls by your word, and also sanctify us by your word. And now we're asking for sanctity, Lord. May you take away everything from the life of your people. Father, remove things from us by the power of your most precious blood. Wash us clean, O Lord Jesus. Your word says, ask and you shall receive. Now with every confidence we have in you, we therefore ask you to release your angels to come and pour your most precious blood upon every one of us. Let your blood touch us. Let your blood touch us, O Lord. We need you, Papa. We need you, Holy Father. Touch us in a special way. Remove everything from us so that our, where our prayers shall locate you. Nothing shall limit our prayers tonight in the name of Jesus. We therefore thank you because we know you have answered us. And therefore to you be all the glory. Therefore, Father, take control and let your angels preside over this prayer meeting. Be the one to speak, Lord. Let not even my word shall be here, but let your word be heard. Therefore, Father, speak through your son and empower him tonight. Use him to solve the problems of your people in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Father, thank you. Holy Ghost, thank you. Mighty Jesus, thank you. You are God, you are not man. You have done it again, and we know you have done it forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My dear friends, I have the great pleasure tonight to welcome every one of us to the house of Jesus and Mary Ministries. Today, we are going to take the reading from the scripture. The reading from the scripture. From the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Now I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab. And he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and they remained there. But Elimelech the husband of Naomi died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Opa, and the other was Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and the Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two children and her son. And this is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. My God and our Father, we have heard your word as written in the book of Ruth, chapter number 1, verse 1 to 5. We are thanking you for your word. All we are asking you now is that since it has pleased you to give us your word to hear, may it please you, Lord, that this word shall make meaning in our hearts, that this your word shall enlighten us. Father, but how can we be enlightened without the help of the Holy Spirit? And so we are inviting the Holy Spirit to usher his light, that eternal light that brings understanding into the heart of men, to come down upon us and baptize us with your eternal light, so that we shall be lightened. And as we are lightened, may our burden be lifted. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. My dear people of God, I have a message titled, When It Does Not Make Sense. When It Doesn't Make Sense. The Christian life, our journey as Christians, is a journey that we ought to follow Jesus. But it is also a journey with so many questions that a child of God may not see the answer right away. And then looking at it from a human perspective, we often say it does not make sense. And a lot of things that we see unfold in the character of a child of God really don't make sense. But over time, we see the hand of God at work. Does it really make sense that God the Father, who is omnipotent, and who will save the whole mankind by his word, of course he created the whole world by his word, would it not be meaningful and uh, with understanding of man that such a God would save man without having his own son to be crucified? Of course, to man, it doesn't make sense. But this is the wisdom of God. This is the wisdom of God, that salvation shall come to man through the death of Jesus. It is by that sacrifice of Jesus that we shall have life, that the whole mankind shall have life, shall have deliverance. This is the way of God. You cannot understand the ways of God, being human. And if He reveals you His mind, praise the Lord. But if He does not reveal His mind, you keep going where He tells you to go. If you wait for God to explain things to you before you make your step, then you will not make a step. Because oftentimes, God will keep quiet, most often to test our faith, until we prove our faith. Look at the man called Abraham. A man that God would have given him the whole world, would have given him the promised child, and would have given him everything that Abraham had wanted from God. And yet God wanted to test Abraham with Isaac, the ways of God. My dear friends Christ, I tell you, if God is God, then we should show that we are his children by believing whatever thing that comes out of his mouth. Now, having said this, look at the reading of today, Ruth chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. There was a famine in the land of um, Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem means bread, the land of bread. The land of bread, that's what Bethlehem means. Now, there was a famine in the land of bread. <laughs> now, what does it mean? It means a land full of abundance, a land of productivity. People come from different parts of the world. They desire to settle in Bethlehem. But something happened in Bethlehem. There was famine. And this famine forced so many people to leave the land of bread. And this was the famine that affected a man's family, whose name was Elimelech. Elimelech was a man of prayer. He was a holy man. Elimelech, being a Bethlehemite, was raised in the ways of God. And he was raising his children, his family, in the ways of God. But because of famine, he had to leave the land of Bethlehem. And he became an immigrant in the land 
and in the country of Moab. Now, when they left the land of Bethlehem, Elimelech left with his wife, Naomi, and his two sons. Now, the Bible calls the two children, that is the two sons, Malon and Chilion. Now, in the land of Moab, these two sons, that is Malon and Chilion, now married two Moabite women. Hmm. They married Moabite women. Now, one was Opa, and the daughter was Ruth. Now, in the course of time, Naomi's husband died. And uh, in the course of time, the, the, the children, that is the two sons of Naomi, also died. Naomi was now forced to live in pains. She was living in pains. She lost her joy, losing her husband and losing her children. In the mind of Naomi, there was no way she would see the hand of God in what was going on. Naomi was crying day and night. Naomi lost the joy of her life. Mother Fred cries, Many a time, we face such situations in our lives when everything appears to be falling apart. When it appears that say family is falling apart. When it appears that everything we have left for in life, that things we have as glory in our lives, that we have been boasting that God has given to us, appear to be fading away. And this was the story of Naomi. And so Naomi decided to leave Moab to go back to Bethlehem. For she heard that God had remembered Bethlehem. So she went back to, to Bethlehem. But as she was deciding to go back, she asked the two daughters-in-laws to remain in the land of Moab and marry other men. Now, Oprah accepted that idea, but Ruth said, no, I am going with you. I am going with you. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> no matter what you do, I am going with you. I'm not going to return back to my people. I will follow you. I will go to you, to your own people. Your people shall be my own people. You see that? Your land shall be my own land. Where you live, there I will live. Where you die, there I will die. Your God shall be my God. And nothing shall part me from you. This was the declaration of Ruth. And so when she saw that she could not convince Ruth to remain in Moab, then she yielded to her decision. And so Ruth followed her to Bethlehem. Life in, in Bethlehem at the first time was not easy. But God brought a man called Boaz, who loved Ruth and eventually married Ruth. But before Boaz came into the life of Ruth, Naomi had a prayer point. And what was the prayer point of Naomi? <laughs> her prayer point was for God to raise for her a kinsman redeemer. What is a kinsman redeemer? Kinsman redeemer. You find that in Ruth chapter 4 verse 14. A kinsman redeemer is someone who is a kinsman. Somebody who is related to the family. Somebody who is in the bloodline who would play the role of a redeemer. Somebody who would take care of them. Somebody who would love them. Now, this was the prayer of Naomi. And God answered her prayer. And so in Ruth chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, and this was Naomi thanking God, saying, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a, a kinsman redeemer. Now, the kinsman redeemer was 
in this case, Boaz, who had come to marry Ruth. Down the line, we know that this same Ruth became an ancestress of Jesus. That Jesus came to the world through that lineage. She entered into that lineage. And you begin to wonder, what then was the very reason why, in the first case, that Elimelech had to leave Bethlehem to go to Moab? <laughs> in the eyes of man, you see that this was feminine that forced them to go to Moab. But in the eyes of God, God was planning something. God was packaging a great testimony. God was doing something that neither Ruth nor Naomi could understand. All that Naomi could see was that I lost my two sons. I lost my husband. It was all calamity she could see. No wonder she was spending her years in tears. But in the mind of God, God was planning something bigger than that thing that Naomi was seeing. Madam Francis Christ, what is the picture you are seeing in this story? Look at Naomi. Life was going away with her. Then all of a sudden, she lost everything she had. She lost everything she labored for. All right? And this happened in a foreign land, in an age when men were the sole providers of their families, and the sons were a badge of honor to women. This was not a small problem for Naomi, for the children that were taking care of her had gone, and her husband had gone. So this is not a pretty picture. So I could understand with Naomi the ordeal she was going through. She was knocked down. She was paralyzed by the forces that had come against her. But you know what? God was making a great plan. God was making a great plan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. In the end, God provided for Naomi. God delivered Naomi from that ugly situation that befell her. In response to the situation of, the, of Naomi, God not only wiped her tears by providing a kinsman redeemer, in this case Boaz, but God also, through her daughter-in-law Ruth, wiped away the tears of the entire mankind as she became the ancestress of Jesus, the redeemer of mankind. Naomi was asking God for a kinsman redeemer. Someone from the kins from their from their from their clan, from their a, a kinsman. Somebody from their bloodline who would understand their situations and who would play the role of the redeemer. Did God answer her prayer? Yes. But God went beyond her prayer. God provided not just a kinsman redeemer that was an answer to her prayer. But God went beyond her prayer and brought through her a redeemer of mankind. Now if you read Matthew chapter 1 verse 5, you see that Ruth was mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus. Naomi did not understand. She did not know what God was doing. She did not know that God was positioning her to be greatly used to bring deliverance to the entire world. And that was, and that, that was the very reason why God sent her and her family to Moab. <laughs> she was sent to Moab to bring just a woman. She was sent to Moab just to bring roots. God called her feminine just to bring roots into a family. God was able to do a great miracle through that feminine. People were 
see his mind. But God was seeing the unfolding of greater blessings. God was not seeing famine. Famine was what forced Elimelech and his family to move from Bethlehem, a land of comfort, to Moab. Alright? When Elimelech was living from Moab, what was in her mind? This is a place where we can get living. But that was not what was in the mind of God. God knew he had kept a woman called Ruth in the land of Moab. Even though she was from a godless nation, but God had seen in her a great gold that is needed in the lineage of Jesus, in the lineage of Redeemer. And somebody would have to go and bring her to that lineage. And the God chose Naomi and Elimelech to be the ones he will use. And so when they came to the land of Moab, the sons of Naomi had to marry these two Moabite women, Ruth and Opa. But because Opa was not part of that promise, she, by divine scheme, had to drop out. And God, by divine selectivity, had to now select Ruth. Ruth decided, I'm not going to leave you, mother-in-law. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to remain in this land. Yes, if I live here, it will make sense that I will marry another person. Yes, if I live here, because people have known my family, they will come and they sympathize with me. And they help me to get myself again in life. But you know what? I am not going to stay here. I'm going to follow you. I'm not going to turn back from you. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Where you die, I will die. Where you are buried, there I will be buried. Your God shall be my God. Look at the kind of, the kind of words that was coming out from the mouth of Ruth. Ruth did not know that she was prophetic. That she was indeed making prophecy. Because it came to pass... That where Naomi lodged, that that place she lodged, because she became a Bethlehemite by marriage. The people of Naomi became her people. You see that? And uh, she died in Bethlehem. She was buried in Bethlehem. And uh, the God of the Bethlehemites, the God of the Jews, became her God. The true God. This was a woman who was born in a godless nation. A Moabite is... A godless person. And yet God chose this woman. Born in a godless society. And brought her into the lineage of the people of God. And put her in the lineage of Jesus. Hey! Jesus. My dear friends. There is something God is talking to us this night. No matter what you are going through now. There is a future plan. God has a greater plan. It may not make sense now, but keep trusting God. It may not make sense now, but keep praying, keep fasting, keep getting up in the night to pray. Don't give up. Don't give up. God is talking to somebody tonight. All right? Can you imagine that, that the reason why all these troubles, all these famine, all these troubles, to move and take that long journey to Moab. That the reason for all these pains was just because God wanted to bring root into the lineage of Jesus. <laughs> that God had been planning that mankind shall be delivered. And God has seen that root would have a role to play. Naomi would have a role to play. Elimelech would have a role to play. Do you see that in the family of Elimelech, every member of the family had a role to play in the coming of Jesus. Now, Ruth was a Moabite. But Elimelech and his family were Bethlehemite. These are people who don't have anything in common. They don't even drink from the same well. They don't go to the same market. In the eyes of the Jew Jewish, 
the, a Moabite is a Gentile. So they are considered unclean people. But when God brought a famine, he now gave to Elimelech an idea to move to Moab. Naomi accepted. And they took everybody to that family, to that Moab. When they came to Moab, they had the children, the two children had to marry the Moabite women. So by marriage, Ruth came into the family of Elimelech and Naomi. And by marriage, she came into to be a Bethlehemite. And by marriage, she was positioned into the lineage of Jesus. Now, this was what God was looking at. God was not looking at that very crisis going on. God was not looking at the pain they were going on. God was not going, even looking at the famine. It was just to bring about his plan to come to be. I hope you'll see yourself in this message. <laughs> if God will send Naomi and Elimelech and their two children to go to Moab, just to fetch root. What would God not do for you? Eh? <laughs> Supposing that Elimelech has said that he will not go to Moab, would Ruth have come into the ancestor to be an ancestress of Jesus? Of course no. If the son has said, no, I'm not going to marry Ruth, would that have come to pass? Of course no. Now, you see, human beings cooperating with God, God calls us to cooperate with Him. It doesn't make sense why God will cause famine just for Ruth to come into the, into the picture. But this is the ways of God. It doesn't make sense to man, but it makes sense to God. Remember the title of this talk, When It Does Not Make Sense. <laughs> When it doesn't make sense, keep trusting God. Keep trusting Him. You don't know why you are sick. You don't know why you have gone to different hospitals and nothing has changed. You don't know why God has healed other people, but your own case, you have not received your own healing. You still go to the hospital and the, the, the report, the medical report is showing that you still have that disease. You don't know why, but God is packaging something. God is packaging something. The ways of God is not the ways of man. <laughs> Has it ever crossed your mind that if we cooperate with God, even in our hopeless situations that we are going through now, that God will bring deliverance to many in the future? That God will change all things? Ay, 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 ay. Look at Noah, Naomi, rather, who was praying for just a kinsman redeemer. And God gave her both a kinsman redeemer and a mankind redeemer. Jesus, the deliverer. That through that decision of Naomi and Ruth and uh, their son and Elimelech, God brought in Jesus. <laughs> So many things went behind the scene before Jesus came into this world. That's why if you, if you look at Matthew chapter 1 and you start paying attention to how Jesus came to the world, then you see that everything that, that, that came to be before Jesus came to the world, where a, a, lot, of, a lot of things went on the scene. You know, starting from Abraham... All the way to Jesus, so many nations, so many destinies came. <laughs> All right? Starting from Abraham, the father of Isaac, and Isaac, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Judah, and the brothers, and Judah, the father of Perez, and Zerah, and all that. The whole thing continued to move down through the generations, even to the point in Matthew 1 verse 5, you see, the Bible saying that Salmon, the father of Boaz, who, whose mother was Rahab, and the Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. 
You see Ruth coming to the scripture. This same Ruth we're talking about. <laughs> oh! And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 1 verse 17 that there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David. And 14 generations from David to exile in Babylon. And 14 generations from exile to the coming of Jesus. And uh, this woman Ruth was part of the story of Jesus. She is part of the genealogy of Jesus. When God was allowing Naomi and his family to go through all those situations, God had in mind the genealogy of Jesus. God had you in mind. He had me in mind that our salvation shall come. The salvation of mankind shall come through this lineage, through this line I'm forming. God was forming a line for, his, for himself. Hey, God, could it be said that even in that marriage you are right now, that even though it is not going well, even though there is storm, even though there are troubles, could it be said that God is bringing you the great testimony? Could it be said that something God wants to do using that marriage, and that is what the devil is fighting? And uh, always remember what happened to Naomi. It was not funny. It was not pleasant for Naomi. It was a stormy marriage. A marriage that started so well. And all of a sudden she lost everything. She lost her husband and she lost her children. And she became childless. And a widow. The devil has seen that Naomi was carrying a destiny that she had a role to play in the genealogy of Jesus. And of course, at this point in this story, nobody knew about Jesus. The world had not known about Jesus. Okay? And God had a plan to come to the world himself. And he had to come to the womb of a woman, Mary. But nobody knew. Isaiah had already prophesied it. But nobody, nobody knew how it was going to come to pass. In the mind of the Jews, they believed that everything would happen within themselves. That God was going to pick all the characters that, to, that he used to bring himself to the world through them. But God went even to the land of the Moab, the land of the, Moab, of the, of the ungodly, and brought the ungodly into the lineage of Jesus. What, is, what a silent message. That in the kingdom of God, you have both the good and the bad. Ay, 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 ay. That God is bringing everybody together to form a kingdom of righteousness. That he is bringing the lost and the found to be found in him. That is Jesus for you. <laughs> that regardless of race or background, that we have the saving grace of Jesus that brings every Gentile and every Jew together. This was what God had in mind when the same mind was going on. When the troubles were going on. When the crisis were going on. God had in mind a plan to form a genealogy for Jesus. For himself. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> So why did a Moabite woman, or let me say a Moabites, have to come to Bethlehem? It is because God wants to do great things. God had to do great things. He sent Naomi to Moab to bring just one woman, a woman of destiny. Even though that Naomi didn't know that the devil knew and came to fight her. So that she, that that destiny will not be fulfilled. If Naomi had no destiny to carry, or if she will not carry a destiny, or if she will not carry a purpose in her life, all the trouble that happened to her will not happen to her. Let me tell you something about life. It is that man in the football pitch that carries the ball 
that all eyes are upon him. Look at all the thousands of people in a football pitch. Okay, in the stadium. Okay, look at all the people at the stadium. They're all looking at just one person, the person who carries the ball. Not the rest. Once you carry the ball, all eyes on you. Once you carry the destiny, all eyes on you. Don't forget the case of David. Nobody knew about this. Listen, I never thought about fighting David. But the Bible tells us in Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 17 to 21, that the moment David was anointed the king of, of Israel, hey, the Philistines came up against him and began to fight him. They wanted to destroy him. Why? Because he was carrying the ball. He had a, a purpose to fulfill. He had a destiny to fulfill. And so in Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says that when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to in search of him, to kill him, to destroy him. <laughs> David was a child of purpose. Naomi was a child of purpose. She had great destiny to fulfill. And so the devil came against her marriage. This is a message for you. Who is listening to me now? The forces of darkness that came to kill the husband of Naomi could be the same force fighting your own marriage. In the case of Naomi, that led to the death of the husband. But in actual sense, it was a divorce. The devil made sure that she was divorced from her husband by killing him. If somebody's wife or husband is separated from him or her, that's a divorce. If the divorce is the case that is settled in the court, then we proudly say, oh, she's going through divorce. But that's why the spirit that is sponsoring that divorce, that what does he want to do to separate you from your husband? To separate the husband from the wife and the wife from the husband. And if the spirit decides to kill, and of course that is their purpose, and if they succeed in killing, it's a divorce. It's a divorce. That they, att they attacked the family, the children of Naomi. It was a divorce. Divorcing her from her husband, divorcing her from her children. Do you see that? But when Naomi saw all the things happening to her life, she went back to Bethlehem. The land of prayer. What do you do when you see your family scattering? When you see the devil attacking your family? Go back to Bethlehem. Go back to the altar of God. Go back to your stronghold. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12 says, Return to your stronghold. Return to your fortress. But even though the enemy had come to fight Naomi, Yet, God turned that fight into victory. God can allow the devil to do what he wants to do, but there's always a limit. Depending on the case of Job, he said, well, you may do whatever you want, but do not touch his life. Do not take his life. What are you going through right now? Do you not know there is a destiny you are carrying? That the devil has seen. And that is why you are going through that stormy marriage. That is why you are going through that stormy relationship with your children. They want to take your children away from you. They want your children to cause you heartbreak. They want you to lose joy because of your children. Why? Because they have seen a purpose that heaven wants to fulfill through your family. And they want to stop it. The reason why you're going through all this is because you carry a destiny. 
because you carry a destiny to be fulfilled as an individual and as a family. And that's why the devil is fighting you. And we are saying, why is God allowing all this to happen to me? Why am I going through all these troubles? Does it make sense? Anyway, it, it doesn't have to make sense. But keep trusting God. And let me even tell you something you may not be happy with. It doesn't really make sense to trust God. I mean, God will tell you something that is stuck contrary to the human reasoning. And it will not make sense to do that. Yet, that is what you ask to do. Does it make sense that Moses would have to hold a, a, a snake by the tail? Yes, God told him to hold the snake by the tail. It is most dangerous to hold a snake by the tail. Maybe what God is telling you today to do may not make sense, but do it. Do it. Do it. I tell you, do it. If you do it, you have a victory to stare. You have a mighty testimony. Can you imagine what was going on in the mind of Naomi? She will be recounting her woes. Oh, God, I've taken away my husband. Oh, God, I've taken away my children. Oh, I, 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 God, I've taken everything I left for in life. God, why are you punishing me? God, why are you so mean on me? In fact, let me even tell you something. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank God I remember this scripture. So let me tell you. Do you know that Ruth, in Ruth chapter 1, verse 21, the Bible says, The Lord has afflicted me. You know who was making that prayer? Naomi. Naomi opened her mouth and said, in Ruth 1, verse 21, he said, The Lord has afflicted me. The Lord has brought misfortune upon me. And Job said, The Lord has brought and the Lord has taken. Lord. Glory be to his name. Who is God talking to tonight? Eh? Put your shoes in the cupboard of Naomi. And let me see whether your leg would fit into those shoes. Would you by chance choose to go through what she went through? Look at her excruciating pain. And yet God was at work. God was at work. <laughs> Look at the life of Joseph. Look at all that he went through. At the end of the whole story of Joseph, he ended in glory. And God used him to be the deliverance of many. Do you hear that? But when Joseph was going through what he was going through, it was not making sense to him. Why his own brothers that were supposed to love him should be the one to plan to kill him and eventually sold him. Why would it make sense to him? And yet, when God blessed him, you know the testament of Joseph, right? In Genesis chapter 15 verse 20. He said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is being done now the saving of many lives the saving of many lives god used joseph to save many lives the life of a nation remember the children of jacob were the 12 tribes of israel and all of them came at the fullness of time to settle in egypt and it was this same joseph that took care of them so God used Joseph to save their, a nation, the nation of Israel. Remember that Jacob, after fighting with the, or uh, having some uh, fight with the angel of God, was given a new name, Israel. So the Jacob, their father, that is the Israel he's talking about. The 12 sons of Israel. These are the 12 sons of Jacob. So God used Joseph to feed a nation, to save the lives of a nation. When Joseph was going through all his troubles, 
God was seeing the end from the beginning. It wasn't making sense to Joseph. Just like what you are going through now is not making sense to you. But you know what? Even when it doesn't make sense, keep trusting God. Keep trusting God. <laughs> Look at Moses. A man of great anointing. A man who was running away from Pharaoh. But God said, go back to Pharaoh. Moses wanted to run away from Pharaoh at all costs. He even suggested to God, why not use Aaron? You know, Aaron is a better speaker. God said, I have chosen you. Go to Pharaoh. We know the how at the end, Moses in obedience went to Pharaoh. And how God used Moses to deliver Israel. All right? The whole nation. But look at all that Moses went through. Look at the birth of Moses, for example. His birth came at a time that <laughs> Herod, uh, uh, Pharaoh, was killing children, enacted a law to kill the babies of the Jewish women. And this was when Moses came. In the course of saving his life, he was put in a basket and put beside the, 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 the mangrove of the, of the Nile River. One of the worst, in fact, the worst crocodile in, in, in human life is the Nile crocodile. Go and check history. The most wicked, most aggressive crocodiles in, in the world. The strongest crocodiles in the world. That is the Nile crocodile. The deadly crocodiles. And yet, none of them saw this small boy. <laughs> All right? No python came to swallow him there. You know why? Because God had a purpose. God knew that he was carrying a destiny. And he sealed the eyes of the enemies. So when the daughter of Pharaoh came to, to take a bath in the morning, and uh, by divine providence, one of her aides saw the boy, and loved the boy, and presented the boy to the daughter of Pharaoh. And she fell in love with this boy. And said, it must be one of these... Um, Jewish woman who don't want her child to kill. She would have decided to kill Moses right there. She would have decided to drown this boy in the river or throw her, throw him to, even to the to, to the uh, animals. But you know what? God said no. Adopt him. And this was how she adopted Moses. And uh, who was the one that the daughter of Pharaoh asked to raise that Moses was the mother of Moses. <laughs> Divine providence. And Moses was living in the house of Pharaoh, having the best education. Okay? He understood the math, the, the arts of Egypt. He knew everything about the life of Egypt. Grew in the in the Gomer house. You know what I mean? Jesus. But when his destiny was to manifest, God appeared to him in a burning fire where Moses was just a shepherd. And God said, You are looking after this sheep, but you're supposed to be looking after my people. And we know how God called him right there. I said, Go back to Egypt, go and meet Pharaoh. The same Pharaoh he will run away from. God, the same Pharaoh he was to to demand that my people shall go free. Pharaoh, let my people go. <laughs> but look at the whole thing that Moses went through. All the fight in the life of Moses. All the things that would have destroyed him. Because he was carrying a great destiny. And God delivered him. And God used him to save many lives. So you see, in other places in the scripture, that God has used great character of the scripture to deliver many people. Are you not part of that story now? Are you not? 
Why has God kept to that marriage? There is a reason. Whatever you are going through now, don't allow the devil to have an upper hand. <laughs> All that the devil wants to do is to make you to give up. But don't give up. Even if what you are going through now doesn't make sense, keep trusting God. All right? Keep trusting God. Keep trusting Him. He will see you through. He will see you through. Always remember that the ways of God cannot be the same as the ways of man. And the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 12, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. And as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it, without watering the earth, and without making it to blood and flourish, so that everything that is sown shall be fulfilled in the fullness of time. So my word that goes out from the, my mouth will not come back to me empty. Do you hear that? That the ways of God cannot be the same as the ways of man. <laughs> that the ways of God cannot be the same as the ways of man. Don't give up. Don't give up. I say it again. Don't give up. Keep trusting God. Even though it doesn't make sense. We believe God is all good. Of course, there's no doubt about that. God is all wise and always in control. That you're sure we know. But you know what? It is easy to say that God is all good, all wise, and, and always in control. Until our lives take an unexpected turn. Until the storm begins to hit us. Until relationship begins to fail. Finances begin to, to, to falter. And uh, even the, until the doctors begin to give you bad news. And if in that situation you keep saying that God is good, then you are real. <laughs> we desire to cling unto God's promises. But what of when God allows some crisis to come? Just like he allowed in the life of Job. Just like he allowed in the life of Naomi. Do you still stand strong? Is God still good? Is He still all wise, my friend? Is He still in charge? I'm asking you, is He still in charge? Do you still believe He's in charge? <laughs> when the storm is shaking us, when the trials are shaking us, and our world appears to be falling apart, do you still trust in your God? <laughs> there is a reason why God is allowing these things to happen Naomi did not get the picture ok but now we see the picture of that of Naomi because we her story is already in the scripture but your own story is yet unfolding do you see glory coming do you see light at the end of the tunnel do you see God bringing Certainty out of this uncertainty. Eh? <laughs> oh my goodness. So, we want God to give us whatever thing we desire. What of it if He doesn't give it to us? What we desire? What of it if He doesn't give us? What we desire. A lady asked me to brother pray that I will marry a rich man. I said, why? He said, because God said, ask and you shall receive. And so I'm asking him to give me a rich man. I said, what if God does not give you a rich man? Will he still be God to you? I said, no. I don't want that. I want God to give me a rich man. I said, I'm not going to pray and pray for you. Because <laughs> the way your eyes is, oh my goodness. <laughs> you, you might say something wrong if God does not give you what you, you, you really want him to give you. Sometimes 
Our blessings do not come in the, in the, in the right envelope we expect. The gold we are waiting for could be hidden in the mud. All right? But God is talking to us. God is making a script tonight. He's making a script out of your life. He's writing a story out of your life. That, you see, we read the story of Naomi today. We, you see all that happened? But now, your own story is still being written. God is writing your script. One day, the world will hear your script. Make sure you cooperate with God. Look, Naomi cooperated with God. And God fulfilled that which he had in mind for bringing Naomi to the world. Why did God bring Naomi to the world? It is that through Naomi, truth will come in to enter into the lineage of Jesus. You see, God knows what he's doing. You know? There is a larger story that you're not seeing now. But the devil wants you to see the, the mess going on now. He wants you to see that why you're not married now. He, he wants to see that why you're married, you don't have children. He wants to see why you, you're married and uh, you, 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 can't, you can't return your pregnancy. He, he, he wants to, the devil wants to see the crisis. He wants to see the shame. He wants you to see the difficulties, your, the problems. That is what he wants to see. The job is lost. Cancer comes and all that and all that. Bad stories, divorce here and there. That is what the devil wants you to see. But you know what? Always ask yourself, why am I going through all this? And I have an answer for you. It is because you are carrying a heavy destiny that needs to be fulfilled. And the devil knew. And that is why he has come to fight that destiny so that you give up, so that you don't trust your God again. But this message of this part is saying, keep trusting God, even when it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to now. Trusting God is not easy. That's where we need his grace. In fact, trusting God when his ways are not our ways is a challenge. It is a paradox that the Apostle Paul describes this way in one of his letters to the Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, saying, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporarily, but what is in, unseen is eternal. Come on. Come on. What are you hearing there? Is the Bible talking to you there? Naomi was not seeing what is unseen. He, she was not seeing the glory ahead. Naomi was not seeing your deliverance now. Naomi was not seeing Jesus coming to the world. Naomi had read. She had gone to the, to the church, to the synagogue, and she had heard it preached by the rabbis that God would send forth a virgin and would give forth a child. She heard about that, but she never knew she's part of that story. She never knew that God was writing a script using her. That God was using her life to write a story for himself. So the devil wants Naomi to see the crisis that God said through the mouth of St. Paul, that the glory of Naomi lies not in the temporal things that are seen, but on the eternal that are unseen. That your glory, that your testimony is not visible now physically. But in the eye of the spirit, it is unseen, and yet it is real, and it is eternal. And it is not temporary, but permanent. God is talking to us. Let us be faithful. Even when it doesn't make sense. Let us cooperate with God, like Naomi, like David, like Moses, like Joseph, like Ruth. Even when it doesn't make sense. Come on. God is talking to us. Even the tough time, keep trusting him. If the doctors come with bad news, take it to Jesus. If your husband leaves you, take it to Jesus. If you lose your job, take it to Jesus. You hear that? If your place of work, everybody is hating you, and yet you did nothing wrong, take it to Jesus. Keep praying because you don't know what God is planning. You don't know what God is planning. A sister called me a few days ago and was complaining of what her, her husband was going to the office. But what she does not know was that God is planning a heavy duty promotion of her husband. 
And that blessing, that mighty blessing is coming through the, the troubles that he was going through in the office. And I wish it's here in this message, here in this message. <laughs> Jesus. So be steadfast. Don't give up. Keep trusting him. He will not fail you. You hear that? Keep practicing how to trust God. Make it a practice. Keep practicing it. People say that practice makes perfect, right? If you keep practicing how to play ball, over time you perfect it. Keep practicing how to trust God. Even when it doesn't make sense. Even when it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I like the way Nahum, Nahum puts this in Nahum chapter 1 verse 7 saying, The Lord is good, a strong refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in Him. That is when you know God. You believe. You believe that He is God no matter what. Even when it doesn't make sense, He is still God. He is still God. Keep trusting Him. Keep trusting Him. His thoughts cannot be the same as ours. His ways cannot be the same as ours. But you know what? Keep trusting Him. Keep trusting Him. Don't give up. Just keep trusting Him. Your deliverance is coming, but keep trusting Him. He's going to give you more than you desire. Naomi was asking for a kinsman redeemer. Somebody who will take care of her immediate family. But God gave her beyond a case maridima. Gave out of her obedience, out of her cooperation with God. God brought a redeemer, not of a case maridima, but the redeemer of the world. Mankind, the redeemer. So we are praying to cooperate with God. This is our prayer now. Father, help me to cooperate with you. No matter how stubborn it is, no matter how tough it is. No matter the level of the storm, Father, help me to cooperate with you. Help me, Lord, to say yes to you like Mary, like Naomi, like Joseph, like Ruth. Help me to say yes to you, Lord Jesus. Ay, 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 ay. Look at all that Mary, the mother of Jesus, went through. Just because she said yes. And yes, she kept saying yes. To say yes to God, conceiving without the natural process, would potentially put her at risk of being stoned to death, of being called an adulteress, and all that. <laughs> but through her, yes, God brought the Redeemer. But it doesn't make sense. I mean, no wonder the, the angel had to tell Mary. He said, Mary, fear not. Because she couldn't understand this. And that was why she treasured all this in her heart. <laughs> if there seems to be no way out of your despair, remember Naomi's story. Remember that Naomi's God is your God as well. That your God is a specialist in delivering you from every horrible pit you find yourself. And he will put you, your feet, on a rock. And the Bible says, in Psalm 40 verse 2, that the Lord has set my feet on a rock and have delivered me from the horrible pit. And may that God deliver you from a horrible pit in the name of Jesus. So be strong, be resolute, be steadfast, be persistent, be persistent, be persistent. Even when it is tough, be persistent. <laughs> and let me tell you something. Persistence breaks resistance. The devil will come to resist you. They will come with divorce. They will come with sickness. They will come with hopelessness. You come with crisis, troubles here and there. You come with joblessness and all that. These are all forces that want to resist you, that want to give up. They want to wear life out of you. They want to suck blood out of you. But if you persist, you break their resistance. I tell you the truth. Therefore, in the midst of your daily challenges and contradictions, and in the midst of your the temptations you go through, in the midst of the adversities you go through, be rest assured that your God is both capable to deliver you and faithful to do so, to bring glory to his, to his name. Always remember that God is the manager 
of all that plays out in your life. He's the manager, not the devil. He never allows our faithfulness to go unrewarded. He rewarded Naomi. He will reward you. So keep your eyes on the reward. All right? His unseen hand is working out praise out of that mess. No wonder the Bible says in Romans 8, verse 38, we know that all things work together for good. Come on. For those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. All things will end well for you if you keep trusting God. If you cooperate to God. <laughs> so when the enemy messes with you, remember who your God is. Remember the story of Naomi. That even though it doesn't make sense, that you keep trusting Him. Is Jesus your security? Then trust in Him. Is He the foundation of your life? Then keep trusting Him. Keep trusting Him. Engage the enemy in a battle prayer, and God will give you victory. God will make sure that He helps you out of the mess you are going through. Don't allow fear to take over you. If you are a fighter, uh, like David, all right? If you are a spiritual fighter, you will get whatever you want. Victory, dominion, testimonies, and deliverance. The kingdom of God suffers violence when men sit on the sidelines rather than engage in battle. Don't allow the devil to have the upper hand. Let us pray. Father, we leave this message to you. And we ask you, Father, who has given us this message to strengthen us, to have the faith of Naomi, always looking unto you, even when it does not make sense. Knowing fully that you rescue us from every hopelessness. As you delivered and rescued Naomi from the hopelessness she was going through. Thank you, Father, that through her yes, you are able to bring salvation to mankind. Father, we thank you. Father, Lord, we pray for marriages that are going through turmoil. May you strengthen them. May you strengthen them, O oh Lord. Through this prayer, may you arrest all the forces against marriage. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you turn every shame, every attack against marriages into victory. For that of Naomi, you turn it into victory. For that of it, Boaz came to marry Ruth and became a blessing and a king's married him for Naomi. And out of her years also, you brought the mankind to him, Jesus Christ. So we pray that salvation will also come through our cooperation with you in whatever you are doing in our lives now, though it may not make sense to us. Help us, O oh Lord, to trust in you. We know you are positioning us for a greater use tomorrow. Father, Lord, help us, Lord, to say yes to you. Help us to learn the lesson of this message and let, the, let this lesson continue to be in our lives. The picture we are going through now may be ugly, but Father, we understand you are the manager of our lives. And we ask you, Father, to help us to continue to trust in you. In the name of Jesus, Father, take over, O oh Lord. When the ugly wind of faith blows, Father, may we cast our faith and trust in you. We know that you love us. We know that, Father, you will never allow our troubles, the troubles we go through to have an upper hand in our minds, but that you will bless us as we continue to trust in you. Holy Father, have your way. Blessed be your name, Papa. We give you all glory. Take all honor and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And amen and amen. And we'll cover this message, Lord of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank